We, we were both elected, you know, duly elected by our Senate districts, and you're representing your Senate district, I'm representing my Senate district, and I think we, we owe it to uh, both, you owe it to your citizens who are saying that they think we need to apply the law e equally, and I owe it to my constituents who are saying, these are not hypotheticals. Between the time that we had the debate in February the 9th and now, in Austin, Texas, there was a, a, a father who, after he briefly dropped off his child at school, he was detained, and in, there was an inquiry as to where his spouse was. I, I know this for a fact. I had a conversation with the, the person who runs ICE in San Antonio over this fact, okay? So these aren't hypotheticals. And so I'd ask, is SB4 law today? No, SB4 is not law so, today. So SB4 is not law today, and that event happened because why did that situation occur? And there's always the rest of the story. I'm not condoning or not condoning what happened, but why did that situation happen today? Because federal immigration law allows for that to occur. And SB4 will not change federal immigration law to say it can occur or it should occur. SB4 isn't a federal immigration law bill. So my point is, and, and it's going back to the sensationalism of some of these fear tactics, that's not attached to Senate Bill 4. If you've got a problem with the process on that issue, it's a federal ICE issue. It's a current administration's issue. And that's where that hypothetical or that reality needs to be heard and vetted and corrected if need correction. SB4 did not change or protect or deter that event because SB4 is not an immigration bill. A few minutes ago you said that the only reason we're dealing with this bill is because not all law enforcement officers have applied the law equally. They've released some dangerous individuals. So I only know of one sheriff in the whole state uh, that has not. Uh, complied with detainers. My understanding is that every other county in the state of Texas other than Travis County has complied 100% with detainers. Is that an accurate statement? I can't. I'm not advised how many are or aren't. I've had several say they aren't, that their policies, whether they be in writing or informal, indicate otherwise. But you and I both know if one goes, then the rest can come. And this is a preemptive measure to shut down that initiative to not comply a detainer request. So the reason why I, I think you, your thinking or, or your assertion is that we're making hypotheticals and creating fear mongering, it, it's, it's not necessarily in that realm. Every police chief that I know of in Texas has come out against, there might be a police chief somewhere that hasn't, but I know the, the big city chiefs have come out, my chief has come out against this bill because he believes that this makes, this bill makes his job more difficult. And, and, and my sheriff and my police department say we apply the law and we honor detainer requests. And my sheriff said this won't change my day one. Our sheriff has said the same thing. Doesn't change that. But the problem is that there is now going to be, uh, I forget how many thousands of police officers San Antonio's uh, police department has. So now the chief can't say, you know what, we're here to enforce uh, all the laws. We're not here to inquire uh, as to someone's immigration status, but your your bill, the bill that we're discussing right now, says that the chief can't say, I want you to focus on crime, I want you to focus on uh, solving crimes, protecting people, and doing these things, because he can't, he can't put that in place. Your bill, if, my, if I read it correctly, says they can't have a policy that says a particular officer, whichever officer wants to inquire during a lawful detention, they can inquire if someone's here legally or not. Is that correct? They can't have a policy prohibits inquiry once a lawful detainment. But does that say that every officer is required to go out and but inquire? Does not. Absolutely no. not. Did I prohibit a sheriff from saying, you know, don't go out and, and um, investigate and protect the citizens against all crimes? Absolutely not. So again, you paint this picture that this is going to consume all of the agency's resources, and we oh, both no, know. Not at all. Both, we both know that's not true, and we both know that. Hopefully, that that situation where an inquiry is needed, it will be done responsibly and produce bigger issues, i.e., human trafficking in those areas. 
I don't think, I trust my guys on the street to not abuse, which is something they already currently can do under federal law. They can inquire today after a detainment. So we're not changing. Again, SB4 is a bill to just say, do what the law is today. And we've made it look like a demon that it's not. Well, there's a, and I there's can a, understand there's a, the pragmatical concerns. Sir Perry, there's a, there's a very clear distinction because if SB4 didn't change anything, we wouldn't be having this discussion. We, why, why would we even be entertaining the bill? The reason we're having that entertainment is because we've got jurisdictions, and as you pointed out, Travis County, that has said we will not do federal agreements at this level, which is, in my opinion, and majority, I believe even you would admit, has put some people back into a community that are considered dangerous. And that's why we're having it. And the secondary, if not the overriding, I guess, is everybody needs to have comfort that the integrity of the law is applied across the board. And when you have 99% of your public, including the immigration community, that have done everything legal, see that it's not going to apply to everybody, that un undermines the entire legal framework that our society is built on. I think the bill goes too far. That's why I won't support the motion. And we respectfully disagree. I understand. The reason I say that is because you just talked about the Travis County uh, Sheriff's Department not honoring the detainers and releasing dangerous people. I think you could achieve the same thing by writing a bill that says that uh, you must honor the detainers once the person is arrested. I don't think that, I think you go much too far, hopefully into unconstitutional grounds, because it will create a situation where we'll have, I'm sure we'll have a case where someone's detained, uh, lawfully detained, and is inquired, possibly a detainer is out there, uh, I don't know, I'm sure you're, you can agree that there's probably, you know, hundreds if not thousands of Juan Gonzalez's or, or Jose Rodriguez's, you know, that might have a detainer out there. And, uh, and, and, you know, it would be a shame if they kept Senator Rodriguez, you know, detained. Uh, but I'm, my point is this. That's a matter of perspective, but I'll, <laughs> I'll let you go with it. So. Well, the, so, po so, the point is that this is, goes too far. Lawful detainment. I, I appreciate just, that, but I think it goes to exactly at the heart of SB4. This is not a federal immigration law. For us to suggest that we know what is and isn't, according to what federal law says is a valid detainer, we're beginning to make our own laws. We will let the court systems figure this out. And you may be right, or I may be right, or we both may be wrong, but I believe over the next four to six years, a lot of the unanswered that honestly do allow for a, a jurisdiction to say this is an innocent when we know fully what the intent might have been, hasn't been reconciled in the courts, and it will be, but until then, Texas has to send us clear message that we do not want illegal criminals released back on the street, nor do we want illegal non-aliens uh, non back on the street anymore. So this, this is a bigger picture. It's about the rule of law. It's always been about the rule of law. I hope that our federal government gets its act together and does send clarity and does fix things. But today I know this for a fact. The law-abiding citizens say, this is what we need to do, and I concur. And you and I can agree that this isn't the right vehicle or disagree. But I'm comfortable to say, I trust my men and women of blue and badge and gun that will not go out and abuse this any more than possibility of it occurring today. And it gives clarity to the jurisdiction and to the frontline officer. We don't play under a set of rules that are subjected by jurisdiction across the state. It brings clarity and a standard that no matter where you're at in this state, you know that if you're in best interest and you're setting up that lawful detainment, that you know for a fact there's other issues going on here. You're not going to prohibit it from doing your job because your boss said not to. And that's very clearly the intent of SB4. Senator Perry, you um, mentioned several times uh, the releasing of dangerous criminals. But let me ask you a quick question. Do you believe federal law, immigration is federal law? Immigration is a federal issue. It's a federal issue. So why are we pass well, we're passing a bill that it gives local law enforcement, even campus police, the ability to act as de facto immigration officers? Absolutely not. No, it's not. 
Because does doesn't it allow you to inquire towards the immigration status when someone's lawfully detained? I thought that's what you said. It's currently law. It's current law. They can. It is the force multiplier that was spoke to when the act came into fruition back under Bill Clinton. There is an expectation because our federal government does not have a local law enforcement. They don't have a sheriff's department. So he clearly said it is a force, force multiplier. Your local guys, your state guys, are expected, if not depended upon, to help us in administrating the enforcement of this law. But it does not give the right to act as an enforcement agent. You're in support thereof. So it does not open up a quasi-de facto immigration system at the local level in Texas. You said administrative enforcement. So in essence, you're saying that they can detain them. But so... I guess the point is this. You're in lawful detainment. You ask about immigration status. They say, I'm sorry, I can't prove my status. Then what happens? You just hold them? If you're in lawful detainment for an other crime or other offense, there's arrestable offense or non-arrestable offense. If you pull them over and the sole purpose is to inquire, you're in violations and there's nothing else you can do if they say, I'm not entering that. And you know that. Yeah, but didn't we just discuss a few minutes ago that a lawful detainment could be rolling a st through a stop sign or whatever is an offense? Okay, what, whatever creates if it's in violation of the current penal code or current criminal code or civil code, it's all an offense that can be lawfully detained. So, but don't you see how that that allows for? I, them to I, it's not any different than what's available today pre SB four. And, you, and I know you can't reconcile that, but I think, that's the I think, truth. Yeah, I, 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 the reason I have difficulty reconciling is because the chiefs of police are saying, this bill makes it more difficult for us to do our jobs. It's not something that's important. It's not good for our jobs. But, you know, I don't, I, 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 you. I, I'm not going to continue uh, belaboring the point with you. Thank I appreciate your patience. No problem. Thanks. Uh, Mr.